When you think of rail travel in Central Asia, what comes to mind probably is something along the lines of old and a bit dated. But in the case of the Tashkent to Almaty train, that could not be further from the truth, as these newer Talco carriages have all the features you'd expect from any other great night train, including onboard showers to a full dining car. So join me on this journey from Uzbekistan to Kazakhstan, where we check out all the features of this train and their one major flaw. Hello from Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan, where we today will be catching a train up to Almaty, the largest city in Kazakhstan. Before you can enter the station, you have to pass through a small security checkpoint, where your bags will be scanned and ID checked. There are no liquid restrictions or anything like that, but on busy travel days, there could be a small queue. But once you have passed through that, it's just as simple as heading into the station, just like you would in any other place. Despite the station's grand appearance, it actually feels kinda small once you get inside. The railway station here is one of the oldest in Central Asia, having opened all the way back in 1899. And in 1957, the station was also connected to the Tashkent metro network with the opening of a new metro line. Inside the station you will find quite a few amenities, such as this power bank rental service, as well as a small shop. And down here there's a small waiting room with more seating, as well as more kiosks. It's also inside the waiting room you will find the station's toilets. And from the waiting room you can also access this small outdoor space. I'm sure this is nice, but not during peak summer, where it's 37 degrees here in Tashkent. So let's head back inside, where there's nice cool air conditioning. To access the platforms you have to take the stair over here to the right, which feels surprisingly small and hidden for such a large railway station, but I guess this is just the way it was designed. I didn't catch any electronic departure displays here at the station. It seems like they do announcements on the station speakers when a train is ready for boarding, but as I speak no Uzbek or Russian and had plenty of time to kill, I just went out on my own to try and find it. And with any luck, our train will be up here on platform 2 and 3, which indeed does seem to be the case. As you can see to the right we have the green Uzbek railways and to the left we have a train in the delivery of the Kazakh railways. And that's the one we'll be travelling on. Which is confirmed by the onboard destination display showing that this train is indeed going from Tashkent to Almaty. I think it would have been better if they didn't list all the intermediate stops because it does take quite a while for the train to show its actual destination this way. It's also worth taking a look at the sheer size difference between these European Talco carriages and the more classic ex-USSR ones. And also between the locomotive and the carriages. Speaking of the locomotive, we will be hauled by one of Uzbek Railways class OZ-Y locomotives up to the border with Kazakhstan. These locomotives were built by Chinese CRRC and are capable of speeds of up to 160 km per hour. There's a small ticket and document check when you board the train, but otherwise you're free to head down to your room. For this journey I have booked a private sleeper with an ensuite bathroom. So now it's time to get settled in while we await departure. Up here is there some luggage storage. And I would recommend grabbing the pillows from the bunk on the top to make the bottom bunk a bit more comfortable when you're just sitting in the cabin. And just a few moments later we start rolling out of the station, ready for a 17 hour journey up to Almaty. Our next scheduled stop is Kellis in roughly 40 minutes, where exit border control for Uzbekistan takes place. And speaking of the route, I think it's about time I show you the map for today's journey. We are on board train number 1, which departs from here in Tashkent and then stops at Kelis, Saruyagash, Arush, Shymkent, Mankent, Tulkubas, Taras, Shu, Uta and finally Almaty 2, 
after a scheduled journey time of 17 hours and 8 minutes. The train covers a distance of 983 km, so that gives the train an average speed of 57 km per hour. And just like that, here we are arriving in Dukeles, where border control takes place on board the train. The process is straightforward. Uzbek border guards will come to your cabin, check your passport and step you out of the country. Your bags will also be checked, so make sure they are ready for inspection. And after roughly two hours on the border, we are ready to move again onwards to Kazakhstan. We physically enter Kazakhstan as we cross over the small river. Shortly after, we arrive in Sarya Gas, where the Kazakh border formalities are handled. In a similar way to the Uzbek one, everything is done on board in your cabin, so you just sit and wait for the border officers to come around and check your cabin and stamp you into the country. The process on the Kazakh side was a bit quicker and only took about 40 minutes. And that's all the border formalities sorted and we are now ready to continue up to Almaty, essentially as a domestic train within Kazakhstan. A lot of the journey is spent just running through the Kazakh steppe. And what's a better way to enjoy the vast nothing than from the comfort of a sleeper cabin? And that takes me to the cabin tour. Up here you will find the second bunk, in case you are traveling with someone else. You will find the light controls over here, as well as an audio entertainment system, a bin. The bedding will be provided by your attendant when boarding. And a pillow. There's also a power outlet. Over here you'll find some steps to help you get into the top bunk, and it also works great as a table. There's also a broken TV screen, and some luggage storage up on the top, as well as these weird tables. This cabin comes equipped with an in-suite toilet and shower. It's small but practical, and it was clean. Definitely a big step up from some of the other rolling stock running here in Central Asia. On board these Talgo trains, in addition to the cabins with shower, you can also book ones without showers, or you can travel in the seated class. There's also an onboard dining car, complete with a full-fledged kitchen, selling various hot meals, drinks, snacks, basically everything you'd expect from a normal restaurant. and in the car next to the order counter, you will find the seating. But as lovely as dining cars are, I opted to go back to my cabin and get some work done. Unfortunately, there's no Wi-Fi on board these trains, and neither is the cell service outside of the towns. So if you plan on getting any work done on this train, Make sure you have everything downloaded beforehand. After working for a few hours, the sun slowly started to set, and I think it's about time to take a shower. And I have to say, I was super impressed. I think this is the best pressure I've had on a night train shower, and the water temperature could get probably hot. The rest of the evening was just spent kicking back, relaxing and enjoying some of the views from the train window. And once the sun set, it's time to close the blinds and get ready to get some sleep. And good morning! We are just about an hour away from Almaty. But as much praise as I've been giving these trains, they have one major drawback, and it's time to address it. These trains rattle and shake a lot, especially when going over points, often with loud banging noises that woke me up multiple times during the night.
Which is super unfortunate, as in basically every other aspect apart from the main one, being able to sleep, these trains really are excellent. This is likely caused by the design that Talco uses for their wheels, having just one pair of wheels instead of the more common two, which likely causes a less smooth ride on the rough rails. We are now passing through Almaty 1 station, the other station serving Almaty, located a little further outside of the city centre, and this is your sign to prepare to get off the train. We just have to make a few twists and turns around the city, and after roughly 17 and a half hours on board this train, we approach Almaty 2 railway station, roughly 15 minutes behind schedule, at 2 minutes past 7 in the morning. And I think it's about time we talk about tickets. Tickets for this trip can be bought online on the Kazakh Railways website, and tickets can be shown as a PDF on your phone when you board the train. In order to book a cabin for yourself, you have to book all the available seats in the cabin. You can just use your own name twice if you're traveling alone. I paid 56,000 tenge for both beds booked roughly 3 months in advance, which I think is okay value, especially considering you're saving a night at a hotel. So what do you think about these Talgo trains in Kazakhstan? Let me know down in the comments if you would want to take a trip with them across this vast country. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I try to post a new one every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at InterCitySimon, where I post live for my travels. It's a great way to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming in the future. Thanks for watching!